In this video, I'm going to show you how to prove an identity. So, we're asked to prove that 2 minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta plus 1 equals 1. We're not being asked to solve this, okay? We're asked to prove it, or to show that this is true. Now, there are many different ways of proving something. Um, and with trig identities, there can be slight variations on a thing. So the person next to you, for example, might prove this in a completely different way to you, but both may still be perfectly valid. Now, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. Option number one. Okay. The first way is to show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So you start with the left-hand side and show that it's equal to the right-hand side. Or, you know, that's, that's how we would deem it. If I had 1 equals 2 minus sine squared over cos squared plus 1, then I'd start with the right-hand side and show the left-hand, show that it's equal to the left-hand side. So, traditionally, you start with the more complicated-looking side and show that it's equal to the other side. So I'm going to show that that is the same as that. So I'm going to start off with the left-hand side. Okay, so I have already 2 minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Oh, I'm so used to writing x. Plus 1. Now, if I replace the sine squared with 1 minus cos squared using the trig identity, then I'm going to get 2 take away 1 minus cos squared all over cos squared plus 1. Now if I expand that top bracket, I've got 2 minus 1 plus, because I've got a minus times a minus, cos squared theta over cos squared theta plus 1. Now the top, the numerator of the fraction, can just be written as cos squared theta plus 1. And the bottom of the fraction, the denominator, is also cos squared plus theta, cos squared theta plus 1. So if the numerator and the denominator are both the same, then this is just 1. So, as I was asked to do, I have shown that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So I'm using LHS to represent left-hand side and RHS to represent right-hand side. So, left-hand side equals right-hand side, so I am done, as required. So that's option one. And you may be looking at that going, well, that was all right, okay, perfect. So let me show you how you can also prove this identity. Option number two, in this case, is that you can work with both sides simultaneously. And if I multiply both sides by cos squared plus 1, then I get 2 minus sine squared is equal to cos squared plus 1. <clears throat> so if I then add sine squared to both sides, I get 2 is equal to sine squared plus cos squared plus 1. So I've just moved the minus sine squared to the other side. And then I can take one away from both sides. So what we've got down to is that 1 is equal to sine squared plus cos squared, which is a trig identity. So because I've got down to a trig identity, which we know to be true, the original must be true as well. Okay, so it's just a rearrangement of this original trig identity. So this proves that that must be true. So either one of these methods will get you there. And you can see that this one was a lot quicker than the first option. But it doesn't matter because the trig identity you might meet in the exam may look completely different. Okay, so in the next bit I'm going to show you another example just to show you kind of what options you have. 